Or bright? Not in the knot. No way. Oh. Holy shit. Has that ever happened before? This is a water knot and this is a beer knot. And we're going to find out how strong this is with a whole bunch of other stuff with the person that Bobby and I got our Sprat Level 1 training with. And Mark Hanna moved to a new facility and when we visited him, he had a whole bunch of questions about gear. Home built screamer. Essentially, as you load this up, it absorbs the energy of a fall by destroying these individual stitches. Well, years ago, I had a, a little sewing company and I love to sew things. And I took apart a Yates screamer one day and realized, wow, maybe I could do something like that. And lo and behold, like 25 years ago at least, um, I kind of did one, and I'd sure like you guys to maybe pull it. I've actually placed this on um, nearly every low ball placement that I thought was uh, suspect uh, in these last 25 years. So, yes. You is... clearly have never fallen on it. No, I've never fallen on it. I never fall. <laughs> falling. Falling. No. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. That was only 90 pounds. We got seven kilonewtons. What broke? So it fully extended, and then it broke out this end. So years ago, I was a window cleaner back in the uh, early 90s. Back then, it was fairly common. There was this company called Sky Genie that used uh, basically utility nylon rope, uh, single braid utility rope to uh, formulate their uh, descent systems. They used swages. So this is a series of compressions. Uh, this one has three compressions. And uh, I was always kind of curious how that would behave. Will it slip by pulling this loop through if it's loaded like that? Or would it break at the eight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's where I estimate point. it'll break. Huh, interesting. So those are made as a personal anchors system? Yeah, these were. I've, never, better yeah, I've never seen rope switched. It's interesting concept. Yeah. But it has been done before. I know that it's been done before because I used to hang on it in work. So I was always kind of curious how that really worked. How old is that rope? Uh, this is about a year old. Okay. But it, it's been used? Yes. Oh, 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 it's slipping. Oh, it's slipping through. Oh, that's amazing. You know, that's not very high. It was. 4.7, 4.5 all the way across here. I kind of thought it was going to break at the pinch, but right here, you can see this part was underneath the swage, and this is like the dirty part where it's been used for years and years. Three point four, it started moving. Four, four and a half. Wow milk in a sheath well there you have it i wonder what cable does that is interesting inside there it's basically a triple scaffold knot if you will and but i took the tail and stuck it through here and pinned it against the quick link so my question is at what point does it fail or slip or anything else where'd the knot go it was a lot easier to find an old lab. <laughs> this was a freshly tied scaffold knot, and it broke lower than Mark's scaffold with the tail retraced through the pinch point. And pulled a gazillion times. And pulled a gazillion times. That's cool. And it's pretty stiff. Could do that with it. So this was a fresh knot that Mark tied to us so we'd have a shorter sample. And it did break versus the knot that has been weighted a ton of night times. And this is a, the same knot. It is the same knot. It has the tail being tucked through. I wonder if the heat has something to do with, because this is moving, this was completely just pre-tensioned. Pre -tensioned and really not creating its own heat. What we have here that I'd, I'd have some questions about, um, we use this uh, Blue Water Titan cord. It's like a five and a half millimeter um, Dyneema core with a nylon sheath, if I understand correctly. I know they recommend tying a triple Fisherman's, but I've tied these with a double Fisherman's into a loop with short tails. So I'd be curious to see uh, what would happen to these under um, 
kind of maximal loading conditions and where they'd get to. This is a Dyneema core, HMPE core. Whoa, 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 whoa. No joke. Feel how hot that is. Oh. That is pretty warm. It's and probably 120 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> FU's freedom units. Oh my God. Based on the MBS, this should have been quite a bit higher, even with this knot, which usually doesn't reduce the strength all that much in a loop. 26 ish. In a loop. In a loop. Yeah but we got less than 18. We just test another video with Sterling power cord, which is six millimeters. And we did something similar to this and we were getting 16 kilonewtons. This is 5.5, similar high tech where you've got some high tech material in the middle, which in this case is HMPE. And it's not surprising that it's breaking a little bit lower than we got on the other stuff. Um, but you're definitely not gonna get with the high tech fibers, uh, as close to MBS as they say, right? You always lose strength when you have a knot, but you're going to lose more when it's more static because it just doesn't like the bends of any sort when it's when it can't stretch. Again, in the knot, this is the tail of the knot. Last three tests were so consistent. Oh damn, that's hot. This is on, fisherman, and a scaffold. Where do you think it's gonna break? Scaffold. Uh, Fisherman's, I think it's gonna break. It's gonna break fisherman's. in the fisherman's maybe. The scaffolds are pretty good. Who sewed that sewn termination? This is a pencil. Okay. Okay, by oh. manufacturer. Yep. So everything you connect yourself to the system has to be rated for 18 kilonewtons. The lanyard, 18 is for soft goods being used as a rope. So your personal anchors are 18, so you can connect to a rope that's connected to a 12 kilonewton anchor? Correct. Well, right. how many of your anchors fail when you test them? Only 2%. <laughs> so this knot is tightening up quite a bit, which is generating probably a lot of heat, but it might just be because we pulled it hard, it broke. Uh, but it broke in the knot about right there. And this held up well. I believe you get more strength out of a rope when it's a sewn termination, but it is twisted pretty gnarly. What surprises me is, what is this, a 11 millimeter rope breaking at 15 kilonewtons? Is, like the MBS on this has to be like in the 20s. I'm gonna look it up while you reset. They don't say. I hate when manufacturers don't give you the information, that, yeah. like that kind of information. And they've tested the shit out of it. Same spot, broken the knot in there. Looks like that. And the sewn part looks like that. Same day, different test, same result. <laughs> well, that's interesting. It was failing on both sides. It failed more on one side though. Here is uh, some one inch uh, Klein spec webbing that is tied with a beer knot, which is a, a kind of a hybrid between a splice and a knot in that it um, tubular webbing's hollow. Tubular webbing's hollow, and you telescope the uh, the tail into it, and then tie a, an overhand knot in it. Yeah, making these is actually a lot simpler than I thought. I had to look it up, and uh, I think you tie the overhand. Yes. Splice yeah. it together and then shuffle the knot around. It's not that much fun, but yeah. No. And then we'll compare this to a webbing in a loop tied with just a water knot. This is a water knot. This is a beer knot because it is so much harder to make than just water. <laughs> That's actually good. Okay, let's see what the other one breaks in. Different result. We got five more kilonewtons. That's pretty good. Very bright. Not in the knot. No way. No. Yeah. Holy shit. Has that ever happened before? It's pretty rare. Pretty rare. There you go. Might be worth the extra work. Kind of fun to just have a buffet of tests to see what things might be interesting to explore. What do you find most interesting? The the slipping swage. Mm, that was pretty interesting. Put in the comments what you found most interesting so I know what rabbit to chase. Thank you, Mark, for giving us this stuff. Cheers.